First up, we go to Louisville, Kentucky for a probable cause hearing. 26-year-old Cody Jones has been charged with attempted murder. 10 days earlier, Jones was staying at his father's house along with another man, 49-year-old Scotty Bruce, who was asleep on the couch. According to police, Jones was upset with Scotty because he'd allegedly stolen Jones's blanket. Jones grabbed a kitchen knife and attacked Scotty, stabbing him several times in the back and neck. When police arrived, Jones had barricaded himself in one of the bedrooms. Officers eventually convinced him to surrender, and he was arrested. Scotty was taken to a nearby hospital with non-fatal injuries. Jones admitted to the attack and was held on $250,000 bond. Today, he appears before Judge William Ryan to learn if his case will go to trial. He's represented by attorney Cameron McCoy. Cross cause number 18, Cody Jones. In addition to attempted murder, prosecutor Becky Schroering is trying to add first degree assault to the charges. She calls officer Adam Metzler to the stand. Did the victim make any statements as to uh, the attempt to uh, kill? He stated he was asleep on the couch. The suspect awoke him, saying that he had his blanket, produced a knife, and attempted to uh, stab him. The victim got up, ran to the front door. The front door was locked, and the suspect proceeded to stab him multiple times while he said he was going to kill him. When the defense attorney cross-examines Officer Metzler, Jones starts to become agitated. And where was the room? So was this, did the incident allegedly happen in the living room? Were there any injuries on uh, Mr. Mr. Jones that you saw? Not that I can recall. As the questioning continues, Jones begins whispering comments to his attorney. Why is the question about you gotta ask the question. I just asked you. He took evidence of white people with blood all over. What what evidence did you collect from the scene? No, we collected the corpse. We took photographs of the scene. We collected three knives, and we also collected his shirt that he was wearing. By now, Jones is clearly upset with his attorney as he continues questioning the witness. And then did you interview any neighbors or anybody in the community about the incident? No. Judge Ryan ultimately decides to grant the prosecutor's motion to add an assault charge to the case. So McCoy focuses on reducing his client's bond from $250,000 to $100,000. Jones, strangely, is against the idea. Quarter mil, five, yes. quarter mil, five. Quarter mil, five, and I don't want to own you. I'm not kidding you. Let's, let's your turn here. I'm not telling you what to do. As McCoy continues to fight for a lower bond, Jones becomes even more upset. No, I've been told you several times. I don't fire. You're my paper post. I'm going to social court. All right, what's your I don't want my to post it at no hundred thousand. Keep it at a million. When McCoy touches his client's hand, Jones becomes livid. Out here, but you don't tell me what to do. I'm sitting here, file. That's it. Give me my paperwork. Right. After a quick warning, here, but you don't tell me Jones delivers a headbutt to his own lawyer. Deputies quickly restrain Jones and take him to the floor. On your belly. On your belly. Jones, let me get a control of you there. I'm going to go ahead and I'll keep the bond where it is. Jones is taken into custody. As for McCoy, he suffered no injuries from the attack. I'm good. Yeah, that was just a light crash. Good job, sheriffs. In addition to the attempted murder and assault charges, Jones is now looking at an additional charge of third degree assault for the courtroom headbutt. He hired a new lawyer, but is yet to enter a plea, and his case is pending. 
Next, we go to a bond hearing in Miami-Dade County. Yeah, baby, Simon, we're not talking to her. You oh, we're get doing out of, out of turn. Sorry about that. The defendant is Juan Rodriguez, charged with attempted murder and aggravated battery and the stabbing of a nurse he believed had stolen from him at an assisted living facility in Miami. Sorry about that. Didn't give you a heads up. The defendant appears remotely before Judge Beatrice Buchko. One second. He cannot be there when I talk to you. From the moment the hearing begins, Rodriguez is making demands. This guy can be there when I talk to you. Oh, it's him. I thought it was the, the public defender. No, I don't need it. But things quickly take a turn for the worse. Listen to me. You don't let me out of here, I'm gonna kill you. When Rodriguez begins to threaten the judge. I'm a Jew. I'm gonna take your life if you don't let me out of here. So what has Rodriguez so worked up? Okay, I'm done. Now let's eat breakfast. Now it's cooking. According to news reports, Rodriguez is angry because he's missing out on the Jewish holiday of Rosh Hashanah. I'm gonna kill you. The judge casually brushes off Rodriguez's threats. Juan Rodriguez is charged with attempted murder, first degree. I'm gonna go ahead and appoint the public defender, seeing as that he doesn't appear to be in a condition to respond. What do you want? Appropriately. What's your pleasure? What do you want from me? The judge gives Rodriguez a stern look, but keeps her cool. If you don't let me out of here, I'm gonna f***ing kill you. Okay, thank you, corrections. Probable cause, no bond, appoint the public defender. Without missing a beat, the judge orders Rodriguez held without bond. So that means he misses out on the apples and honey and the rest of the holiday meal. So now let's eat breakfast, the rice cooking. We go to Louisville, Kentucky for a pretrial hearing in the case of 19-year-old Keontae Hunter. Two years earlier, Hunter was accused of entering the home of 21-year-old Jesse Williams and shooting him and his girlfriend, Shardedrick Cooper, while they slept. Jesse died of a gunshot wound to the chest. Shardedrick was hit in the leg and survived. The couple were acquaintances of Hunter's, but the motive was unclear. Hunter was arrested and charged with murder, attempted murder, first degree assault, and tampering with physical evidence. Today, the court is hearing testimony and arguments about a motion filed by Hunter's public defender, Josh Roberts, to suppress a statement Hunter gave to police after the shooting. Keontae, who was a juvenile at the time, the case law does support, and just our own common sense knows that juveniles have a lowered understanding, a lower intelligence when it comes to legal rights and things of that nature. Hunter seems to take umbrage at Robert's comments. I would argue that given his situation as a juvenile, that the Commonwealth has not met their burden showing that that was an intelligent and voluntary waiver. I'll get you a written order once I've reviewed the statement in its entirety. Go ahead, Mr. Young. Mr. Hunter, no. hold on. Hunter's been sitting quietly for 35 minutes, but decides he's got something to say. I can't do this. Get dude. You, you I, need I can't. To sit I down. won't do. I won't do it off my sit case. Down. I, I'm. Man, no. Uh, it's conflict of interest yeah, between me and the kind. No, nah, man, I want to file a verbal motion. I can't do this. Get dudes. I, I won't do I won't do it off my sit case. Down. An officer gets Hunter back in his seat. Man, nah, uh, but when he drops the F-bomb in open court, the deputies decide it's time for him to leave. Mister. That's when Hunter leans in and spits in his attorney's face, then swings his handcuffed arms at him. The deputies pull Hunter away just in time and wrestle him to the floor. As he's led out of the courtroom, Hunter leaves Roberts with a threat. Come on, come on, let's go, let's go. I'm coming to my next court day, dog. Spit in your face. I'm you okay, Mr. Roberts? I am, Judge. Mister. Despite the outburst, the motion was actually successful. Part of Hunter's statement was suppressed, and he was assigned a new public defender. But eventually, he was convicted of murder, first-degree assault, and 
tampering with physical evidence. He was sentenced to 25 years in prison. Next, we're at St. Joseph District Court in Centerville, Michigan, where 30-year-old Brad Johnson's been charged with two counts of criminal sexual conduct in the second degree and sexual assault. Johnson's scheduled for an upcoming competency hearing, but today, Judge Jeffrey Middleton checks in with attorneys from both sides of the case in advance of the hearing. So far, Johnson has not been cooperative with the court, and two weeks earlier, the judge sentenced him to 30 days for contempt. Today is not off to a good start either. We're all holed up waiting for him. I would resp respectfully request his presence. After a few minutes, a sergeant from the sheriff's office brings Johnson into the room, although he's not on camera. Well, here we go. Mr. Johnson, can you hear me? He can hear you. All right, Mr. Johnson, uh, so far you've been particularly uncooperative about appearing when you're supposed to be. We need to move this case forward. Your lawyer, Mr. George, is here. Are you willing to speak to him? Timothy George is not my attorney. All right. Mr. Johnson, would you have a seat in the chair? No. Mr. Johnson, you can't avoid this case by simply saying, I don't want to participate. I'll continue to find you in contempt. Um, Johnson has just left the room. He just walked out. At some point, I'm going to ask that he be put in a restraint chair and have his skinny ass dragged back in that room. Uh, We're trying to. Sergeant Hasbrook. After a few minutes, Johnson returns. He's right there. All right, Mr. Johnson, have a seat. The defendant does what he's told. Sort of. Mr. Johnson, you need to be in the picture, or I'm going to have them put you in the restraint chair and wheel you in there so you and I can speak. Finally, Johnson slides over and appears partially on camera. Talk about passive aggressive. Mr. Johnson, you told me several times that you have your own lawyer who is your father or stepfather or somebody. Do you have someone who is going to appear to represent you on your own behalf? As Johnson remains silent, the judge announces next steps for the case. We're going to have a hearing next week. You're charged with very serious sexual assault crimes, and you're not going to avoid them by just putting your hands over your ears. Well, that was not very successful. A week later, despite more shenanigans at his competency hearing. Mr. Johnson, would you have a seat for a moment so you and I can talk? Johnson was ruled competent to stand trial. Judge Middleton denied the motion to withdraw public defender Timothy George as Johnson's legal counsel. His case is pending. Next, we go to White Cloud, Michigan for a hearing. 57-year-old Roy Snell has been charged with felony murder and felony firearms possession. 38 years ago, 25-year-old Richard Atwood went missing. He was last seen driving his 1975 Trans Am with a then 18-year-old Snell, an acquaintance, along for the ride. Police found Richard's car two months later, but they never found Richard. They questioned Snell, who denied any involvement in Richard's disappearance. Without any evidence against Snell or a body, the case went cold. But 33 years after Richard's disappearance, advanced technology helped investigators ID Richard's DNA in the trunk of the Trans Am. A witness also came forward claiming Snell admitted to killing Richard and stuffing his body in the trunk of the car before disposing of it. Police now believe his motive was robbery. Snell was arrested and pled not guilty. We'll go on the record in the matter of the people of the state of Michigan versus Roy Snell. 
Today, Snell appears remotely from the Nuego County Jail before Judge Melissa Dykeman. He's asking that his lawyer, Stephanie Korndike, be removed from the case. This is not the first attorney Snell has tried to fire. Mr. Snell, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Uh, Ms. Korndike, it's your motion. Why don't you go ahead and tell the court what you're asking for? Uh, yes, Your Honor. I'm asking to um, be allowed to withdraw from this case as there has been a breakdown between um, myself and Mr. Snell. Um, I did attempt to contact Mr. Snell. We had a bit of an argument on the telephone and he did hang up on me. From that interaction is my understanding that he probably does not want me to continue on his case. I am prepared to go to trial. However, the re relationship is, is broken to a point where there's no communication. Thank you, Ms. Kornick. Um, From the people, a response? Just because we've had so many adjournments in the past, we think it's incumbent upon the court to continue this trial to have it completed within a reasonable amount of time. Mr. Snell, anything you want to tell me about whether or not that's true, that you don't want her to represent you? I ain't seen the lady in six, seven months. And look at what y'all gave me. Y'all gave me a public pretender. If she was a lawyer, she would have been up here fighting my case. Everything that she said, that's some I don't want that Hey, you're not going to curse. If you've got an issue, you can tell look, me what got me here. Wait a minute. I got an issue. Y'all got me here illegally. This some Y'all need me to use the law this man to break to curse. Mr. Snell, if you continue to curse in my courtroom, I will have you removed. Show me some respect. Okay, please mute him for me. Mr. Snell, I'm not going to put up with you speaking over me, cursing on the record. If you're not happy, you're not happy. That's fine. You don't need to talk like that, and I'm not going to put up with it. The judge decides to give Snell another chance and unmutes him. Mr. Snell? Now, if you'd like to explain to me why you think there's been a breakdown in your relationship with Ms. Korndike, you Wait can a do minute. so. In case you didn't hear me correctly, I'm going to say it once more. She ain't been up here in about seven months. She ain't tried to do no work on my case. Ms. Korndike, he's indicated you haven't been there in seven months. Have you seen him in the last seven months? I have, Your Honor. In fact, I believe I went in September and I directly handed him everything that he had given me. She lying. Mr. Snell, Mr. Snell yeah. she didn't interrupt you. Don't interrupt her. He's not willing to tell me anything about the facts and circumstances, no matter how many times I've tried. That's a lie. That's a lie right there. Have you been to the jail more than once? Yes, I have, Your Honor. The jail got a record. The, the jail got, got a record. Mr. Snell Check the record. Almost four hours. After considering both sides, the judge is ready to make her decision. The court is not convinced that uh, Ms. Horndike has done anything inappropriate. She's prepared. She's a professional attorney. Yes. There seems to be a habit by Mr. Uh, Snell of purposely attempting to break down uh, relationships with attorneys, both the, uh, the previous attorney and this attorney. The court is not required to give new attorneys when and if uh, he refuses to cooperate with his um, counsel, refuses to speak to them. This request would cause a serious disruption in already a two-year-old case. The court's going to deny the motion to withdraw and leave the matter scheduled for trial next week, Monday. Okay. We're adjourned. Thank you. A week later, Snell went to trial with Korndike serving as his lawyer. He was found guilty on both charges sentence is pending. Next, we're in district court in Washtenaw County, Michigan for a virtual hearing. Judge Anna Frushauer is presiding over a busy docket today with many attorneys and defendants logged in, waiting for their cases to be called. One of them is 44-year-old Derek Lester. Six months earlier, on his first day at a factory job, Lester got into an altercation with a manager over his timesheet. He allegedly grabbed the manager by the throat, threw him into a pile of boxes, and then tried to punch him. Lester was later arrested and charged with assault. He told police he never touched the man, that he only pointed and argued. Lester said he didn't like the manager talking down to him. Today in the virtual courtroom, most sit patiently at home or at work, but Lester has decided to multitask. 
while he waits his turn. He appears to be grooming himself, then having a smoke break, all while popping on and off his virtual background. But after everyone in the hearing watches Lester shower and shampoo, Judge Frushauer decides it's time to address his inappropriate courtroom behavior. Mr. Lester, you need to put a shirt on or you're going to be removed from the meeting. But when the judge calls his case minutes later, Lester is still shirtless. State of Michigan versus Derek Lester. Uh, yes, I'm here, Your Honor. Mr. Lester, put a shirt on. Uh, give me one second. All right, I'm ready. I'm ready. Mr. Lester, this is still a courtroom, so please, in the future, put on an appropriate shirt for court. I am so sorry. I just got out the shower. I'm sorry. The judge decides to just move on. Sir, if you can't afford an attorney, the court can appoint one at the public's expense. Would you like the assistance no. of an attorney? Yes, yes, you can, you can appoint me an attorney. Okay. The judge calls on public defender Brian Crago, who's in the virtual courtroom for other defendants, to represent Lester for today. They go into a private breakout room to briefly discuss his case. When they return, Lester has a more appropriate shirt on, but now it's his headgear that catches the judge's attention. Mr. Lester, you need to remove your hat. This is still a courtroom. And apparently things did not go well in the breakout room. Based upon our communication or lack thereof in terms of our ability to effectively communicate with one another, He's asking for two weeks what so he was can the hire. What discussion about? What was the discussion about? It was pertaining to your courtroom behavior and decorum, and hit my advice. Okay, and, you was and disrespectful. You was you was disrespectful, and you was talking to me like I was your child. So therefore, that's where the problem lies. And no, you will not represent me. Mr. Lester, you yes, wish to retain your own. Yeah, I'm gonna company. go ahead and spend my money. I'm gonna go and spend my money. That's what I'm gonna do. I already got. How much more time are you requesting to find an attorney? <laughs> Mr. Lester, you froze, so I don't know what your response was. Hello. Hello. I think we might have lost him, so I will pass this matter. Mr. Lester, can you unmute yourself? After a few more tries, Lester has found a stable internet connection. How much time are you requesting for this? Uh, I think I need another 30 days realistically. Mr. Lester, that will be your final opportunity to retain counsel. At that point, you'll have to represent yourself or you'll have to use the public defender's office because there is a victim in this case and I can't keep adjourning it indefinitely until you can retain counsel. Do you understand that? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Lester did hire a private attorney to represent him at his next hearing. He remains free on bond pending trial. Next, we go to Miami, Florida for a first appearance hearing. 38-year-old Felix Goldstein has been charged with misdemeanor battery. And after his arrest, Goldstein allegedly got into a fight in jail, picking up a second battery charge. He's pled not guilty to both charges. He was initially granted bond of $1,500, but failed to post it, so he's been in the county jail since his arrest. Today, Goldstein appears before Judge Carmen Cabarga, who will decide if there's probable cause in his case and if the bond amount will be adjusted. Representing the state is Nessa F. State. Um, so it looks like in this affidavit, it states that um, he pushed the victim first. The defendant's in custody on a misdemeanor battery, which owner said a $1,500 bond on this case. As the judge looks over the charge, Goldstein <laughs> argues his case, not realizing his microphone is muted. I do find um, probable cause and I'll give a bond of 1500 
Anything else? No, Judge. Because of the jailhouse incident, Judge Kabarga sets a second bond for Goldstein for an additional $1,500, increasing his bond total to $3,000. But just as the judge is ready to move on to the next case, Goldstein unmutes his microphone. All right, sir, thank you. Hello, can you hear me? Same facility. Stay Hello. The Ma'am, can you hear me now? I don't think you could hear me before. No, I can hear you now. I was saying uh, I'm Goldstein. Uh, yes. I don't want her uh, or anybody representing me, any lawyer at the moment. Okay. And I don't want to give in personam jurisdiction to the court. So therefore, okay. I'd like you to dismiss the case. Okay. In personam jurisdiction is a legal phrase that basically means the court has jurisdiction over a defendant. Mm -hmm. And also, I have another case that I was going to ask you to also, uh, I don't want to give in personal jurisdiction to the court. That way, I want you to dismiss basically all the cases that I have. All right. Um, and, and I would like immediate release also. I'm not doing that at this time. Yeah. Uh, Ma'am, you just you just uh, agreed that you were going to dismiss the case. No, I, I did not, sir. The defendant seems to have his own interpretation of the judge's responses. I want you to dismiss basically all the cases that I have. All right. You are to stay away from Do you understand, sir? As best that you No, I don't understand. I explained to you. I know all about the whole 13th Amendment. You are to stay away from him, sir, okay? Uh, Ma'am, I got another reason why the case should be dismissed then. Uh, you don't have a valid charging instrument. All right, sir. Thank you. So the case is dismissed then? Right, the case is not dismissed, sir. I set a bond of $1,500, okay? Okay, I got a question about my other case then. I can't answer a question about the other case. I don't have that now in front of me. turning that. off my, you, can, you can't go back on your word. You already you already explained that you were okay with uh, dismissing this case. No, you misunderstood. I explained right away that I don't want her representing me. I understand that, sir. It's a first appearance. I just found probable cause on the charge that of the case that's before me today, okay? Thank no, you. I don't understand that. Ma'am, you, you can't go back on your word. Let's look. Let's look at the charging instrument. Sir, but look. finished for today, okay? You what about my other? Okay, I got a question. Listen, I got another case. Well, I was, I would like to take care of that case. Look, let, let's rule fairly. This is ridiculous. You know, there's a lot of cruel, unusual punishment. You just We're agree. Not to that at this time, sir, that case will be addressed with, by a different judge, okay? I would like you to take care of it. That whole case is all you, crazy. Okay. When is my next? Sir, we are done for today. Thank you. Despite Goldstein's lack of success at this hearing, both of his cases were later dismissed due to lack of evidence. Next, we're in Taylor, Michigan for an arraignment. 47-year-old Joshua Lanto has been charged with interference with police activity, a misdemeanor. Four weeks earlier, Lanto was filming and yelling at officers as they tried to conduct traffic stops. People versus Lanto. He was arrested and charged. And today, Lanto appears virtually before Judge Joseph Slavin, presumably to enter a plea. Representing the state is David Greco. Before discussing the case, Lanto's court-appointed attorney, James Gazicki, has a request of the court. I, I'm asking the court right now if I could withdraw on this matter. Uh, I don't think I could adequately help Mr. Lanto in his legal arguments. And uh, I'm just asking the court if I can withdraw. All right, then uh, Mr. Lanto, then uh, I can appoint a, uh, a different uh, court appointed attorney. I don't want anybody speaking for me. As a matter of fact, I mean, the, the, all I really want is to be left alone. So that's uh, first and foremost. First, let me, let me do the arraignment part. You, you, I need to let you know what exactly you're being charged with, all right? Now, it is alleged that while in the city of Taylor, that you violated city ordinance 32-31 which is a, um, a charge commonly known as interfering with the uh, police authority. That is a misdemeanor punishable by 93 days in jail and or up to $500 in fines. So, as to that charge, how do you plead, guilty or not guilty? The question's pretty straightforward. 
But Lanto has other matters he'd like to discuss. Well, first, uh, can I just make a few clarifications? Well, first, uh, this, I'm going ca to caution you that anything you say can and will be used against you. So I understand. Two. And you're stating that it's based on an interaction. So my guess is that you have no firsthand knowledge of anything that happened. Well, I'm not stating anything. All I'm telling you is what the people of the city of Taylor have charged you with. It seemed like you were getting a little angry. I don't know. I mean, I'm, getting, I'm not getting angry, sir. Well, nobody's trying to bamboozle you or anything like that. I just need to know if, if you're pleading guilty or not guilty. And if you're well, not answering I, that question, if you're not answering that question, then I'll enter a plea of not guilty for you so that it preserves all of your constitutional rights and the case still moves forward. Well, like I said, if, I would just prefer to be left alone and not have to come back at all. And my concern is we've got a police officer and we've got a prosecutor, both are state actors, and they're trying to bring charges against me. And I just want to know, because you are a judge and you are another state actor, am I going to get a fair and meaningful hearing? So I swore an oath to the Constitution that I put my hand on the Bible and swore to. And I'm telling you, I don't break my oath. Okay, so would you not, agree with that you're not going to get a fair hearing? That's my job, is to make sure well, that, that, that fairness happens, that due process happens. Judge Slavin remains calm, even as Lanto questions the integrity of the court. If the victim is going to be the city of Taylor and it's going to be presided over by a judge that is paid by the city of Taylor, then I have serious concerns for the fairness and the meaningfulness of this of these proceedings. I am a judge of the, of the 23rd District Court of the State of Michigan. It's located in the city of Taylor, but I but I am not I don't work for the city of Taylor. And right now I can do one of two things. One, I can set this up for a pretrial, or I can just set it for a jury trial or bench trial right now. This time, instead of answering the judge's one question, Lanto offers up a proposal to end the case. I'm willing to forego any, uh, any intention of uh, criminal charges against the prosecutor if they're willing to just dismiss this now and leave me alone. The judge has had enough and decides to wrap things up by scheduling a settlement conference between the state and the defendant. I would advise if there's a resolution then, then there's a resolution. If there's not a resolution, then I'll set it for, I'll ask if you want a bench trial or jury trial, all right? Outstanding, outstanding because I'd like to talk to this uh, prosecutor who I suspect is a criminal at this time. The defendant may have finally crossed the line. I'm gonna, I'm gonna caution you, Mr. Lanto, I'm gonna caution you, and I'm gonna caution you once. And the next time it happens, I will hold you in contempt. I do not run a Jerry Springer show. I do not run a Jerry Springer show where the litigants are going to use words and sayings and call each other names. Until you prove otherwise in a court of law beyond a reasonable doubt, you are not to call any other litigant a criminal. Lanto decides to heed Judge Slavin's warning. Okay, I certainly appreciate you being fair. I swear to do, that's what I always do. Have a good day. Thank you. The judge went on to grant Gazicki's request and removed him from the case. As for Lanto, he's been assigned a new public defender, and his case is pending. Thanks for being a fan of CourtCam. Subscribe to AE to never miss a new video and catch full episodes on AETV.com.